As you can tell, this video is about the X-T5. I've had the camera now for just, just under a month and I've been shooting with it every single day and just to see if there's anything that I'm not keen on. And so far, for me, I'm still in the honeymoon period with the camera and I expect that to continue <laughs> for a long, long time. I just love using the camera. It's absolutely brilliant. I love the X-T3. Unfortunately, I had to sell the X-T3 to get a Nikon Z7 II so is that myself and my partner had the same lens system but I really missed the Fuji system so after a while I ended up selling the Z7, Z6 II to buy an X-T4 only at the beginning of this year for this to come out last month so the X-T4 was sold to allow me to buy this and that, that's just the way of things, that, that's what's going to happen with it in the video you will see some images that have been taken over the last month with the camera and it's just snapshots really but it's just to see what the camera can do or what I can do with the camera because the camera can do a lot but one of the things that I don't do too much is just snapshots I like to take my time with an image and I've actually really enjoyed just being out in the streets or just out in a walk in nature and just taking snapshots every time or nearly every time in aperture priority mode just to see how the camera handles different things I've also read online that there are some focusing issues with this and I have seen it, I am aware of it and I've actually included in the video just in case you're unsure about that and this is putting you off buying the camera I've got a section in the video of some focusing exercises that I did with this so Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Yes, it's a Fuji fanboy video. I've got to admit, I love them. I love the systems. But hopefully you enjoy it. If you're a Fuji shooter, you'll know exactly what to expect from this camera and it really doesn't disappoint. The hand grip is slightly bigger, but for my bigger hands, I do find that I will have to add an additional hand grip to this. Being a Fuji fanboy, as they say, I love the aesthetics of the camera and the knurled dials have the same great friction. I do believe the diopter dial is slightly bigger on this one, which is great, especially when you have gloves on. And they've brought back the flip and tilt screen from the X-T3. With the images here, I chose a single point focus area and also a wider point focus area. And I also manually focused. I had highlight peaking on and I chose four areas in this image that included the batteries, the lens, the edges of the paper and actually the face. Okay, not the most scientific of experiments, but it's just like you see the sharpness of it. This one here, the image on your left, was spot focusing. Image on your right is manual focusing. It just lets you see the difference here. The third image, as you can see, I've marked them all off. This one here is with a wider focus area. So if I just click that, I didn't have to drag that in. So this is the wider focus area. And you can see here that this is a lot softer. Down here, it looks as if it's missed and it's focused mainly on this part. So we'll go for the second image, which is that one there. And this is on the lens itself. And that one, and so the active one will be here. Now you can see there's a better contrast in this once this clears up. You can see there's a better contrast in this, but this one actually looks sharper. The XF zoom here i would argue that it looks sharper on here than it does on here but it can it'll just let you see and down here is a wider focusing area once that cleans up as well so that's the wider area here which i would say again is now in this point is sharper and for the third one this focusing point here is down on these pages here now if i just do that and we'll take that one 
and it will load it in. Get down here, roughly about there. Marginal difference, I would say this one is sharper. And this is the manual focusing again. So I would say that one's actually sharper and this is it with a wider focus area. Again, I would, I would say that one's softer. So, so far, manual focusing wins anyway, but it just lets you see the difference. And the final one, I'll drag that in there, which is the red, and this focus point was on here. And the reason I chose this one was simply because it's a curve in it, so the focal plane's at an angle as well. And the final one would be here, We'll drop that in there. Now between these two, there is not much of a difference in that. So if I zoom that one back out and zoom that one back out, that area there was the focus area. Just actually in here was it the focused area on that one. It was the focus area here. This was the spot focusing. This was the wider area. Now I'm going to bring in the manual focusing on the active window and we'll zoom that in we'll zoom that back in you can see again manual focusing wins with that one it is negligible but manual focusing here again is the winner with this so i thought it would be interesting to focus stack the manual focus images and remember there's only four points that it was focused on point one point two point three and point four so has it done what i hoped it would yes there is anomalies in it i've already zoomed in to see so that's there but that's a focus stacking issue that's i didn't create any safety layers as i call them just to copy them back in but you can see how well and how sharp the image is even look over at the batteries here down here you'll notice another anomaly within that and that's simply because i didn't work my way through the image when i was focus stacking i only took four points but look at the sharpness of the text here all the way over to the face The main reason I upgraded to the X-T5 was because of the 40 megapixels. I did want to see what this, what type of images this would produce on an APS-C camera. And so far I have not been disappointed. Some of the images on the screen here have been shot with the 18 to 135 lens and others have been shot with the 35 f 1.4 and everything i did i left the camera most of the time in aperture priority and just took snapshots along the way whether that was in the streets or in the landscape itself just while i was walking around studio stuff that i've done so far i have really loved the results from it i've not been disappointed at all and i haven't found any reason to be disappointed even from a, a crop of a jpeg the resolution is great for this camera as you can see by this image here this isn't even focus stack this is just a straight shot with it 18 to 135 of a studio setup I did a still life I've added texture to the images you can see here but the clarity in this for what I need this camera is just going to produce everything that I need the camera also has pixel shift shooting now I haven't done much with it but this photograph of the Bronica here just shows you what it can do and as you can see it's 15,456 pixels by 10,304 for any type of of product photography this is going to be absolutely brilliant again for me so i'm looking forward to doing more with this 
So that's me with the X-T5 so far. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see just a few things that I've been doing with it. Still a lot more to do with it to get out shooting landscapes and everything. I'm really enjoying because of the winter and everything like that. I'm really enjoying in the rainy evenings setting up some still lifes and shooting that as well. It's a great camera. I'm really enjoying the camera. As I mentioned, I've had it with me every single day since I've had it. I, and I've put a couple of lenses on it. I bought, borrowed my colleague's f1.4 35mm and great really really lovely lens really sharp i've been shooting with the 10 to 24 and also the 18 to 135 now fuji have produced a list of recommended lenses and by that they are meaning the lenses that will go get the optimum results out of the sensor unfortunately for me the 10 to 24 isn't on that list so I'm going to go out again with the 10 to 24 and just see what I can get with it. If I have to move the lenses, I will because the camera is actually worth doing it. So it might mean selling some lenses to get the lenses that I'm after. But we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you enjoyed me ranting on about this X-T5. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, really impressed with what they've done with it. And I know it's a kind of an amalgamation of the X-T3 with the xh2s sensor or xh2 sensor which i haven't tried i'll be honest i haven't tried the xh2 uh, i just like the size the compactness of this yes i am going to require a bigger hand grip just because of the size of my hands and because of that but that that's a small thing for this and i've got, I've got three small rig ones sitting here for previous incarnations of this great camera absolutely love the camera Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.